Nathan, well, it's now time for our weekly political segment, Texas Face Off. Joining me this morning is Glenn Smith, senior strategist at Progress Texas, and Matt Makowiak, the chairman of the Travis County Republican Party. Thank you both for being here today. Happy to be here, Ashley. So, big news that we had yesterday was the decision by the General Investigating Committee of the House of Representatives to ask the Texas Rangers to step in and look into this conversation between Speaker of the House Dennis Bonin and the CEO of the conservative group in Power Texans, uh, the Public Integrity Unit said they will initially launch an investigation. And before we kind of start talking about, you know, all of this investigation and what it means, I want to talk a little bit about why this is getting so much attention. And Matt, I'm going to start with you because Empower Texans, while they are, you know, a conservative group, some see them as sort of a thorn in the side of Republicans in Texas. Well, they've, they've certainly um, uh, targeted particular individuals in the party, elected officials. They were very dissatisfied with the direction uh, former Speaker of the House Joe Strauss was taking at the legislative level. They want to see, cons you know, considerable conservative reforms pass every session. If they don't, uh, they try to basically defeat uh, members who, who resist those reforms. Um, so yes, they've played in Republican primaries and at times they've been at odds uh, with the party and with some of its elected officials. You know, in this case, the question is going to be, uh, is there any type of criminal liability as, in terms of what happened in the meeting? And of course, Texas Rangers have a tremendously good reputation in our state. They're going to take the investigation very seriously. They'll report back to the General Investigating Committee and hopefully to the public. Um, and we can go on from there. Right now, there's just a cloud hanging over all of this. There's a lot of uncertainty. We're in, a, we're in an unprecedented situation here, uh, and I hope it gets resolved in the next month or so. Yeah, and, and part of this is there's also a lawsuit into all of this. The Texas Democratic Party is suing because they feel like there were violations to the Texas Elections Code, claiming there, there was some sort of agreement uh, offered between Speaker Bonin and Empower Texans if the PAC the Empower Texans PAC goes after this list of Republicans, then we will give you those those media credentials that you want so badly for, you know, the Empower Texans uh, blog, their kind of journalistic entity. Ooh, talk to us about the lawsuit. Well, I think I just want to get the tape made public, the full tape. We've had excerpts printed, you know, here and there, and lots of people have heard it. I think Matt's been able to hear it, but the general public hadn't heard it yet. Democrats think everybody deserves a chance to hear the voices on the tape. You know, I want to quote that great movie, Spinal Tap. It says it's a thin line between stupid and clever, which is the people that took this meeting in the first place were rather stupid to do it. I think both sides, really, because they met in secret to plot against members of the House. That's the cloud Matt speaks of, I think. I think it's a... Uh, distrust growing, especially among Republicans, but Democrats as well because they were targeted. And it's hard to have a House Speaker distrusted like that in such a major way. He had told members he would bust them from the committee assignments if they opposed any incumbents, and then he turned around and imposed incumbents. So I, too, trust the Texas Rangers to get to the bottom of the criminality or possible criminality, but more than that is what is the future of the House with a speaker in this kind of trouble with its own members? Yeah, and you, you raised a point that I wanted to get to, which is, Matt, we have read that you heard parts of the tape. Uh, Sullivan, simply put, is what he's saying true? It is. I listened to the whole tape, I forget, I think it was last Wednesday, um, and so it's over an hour. Uh, his description is accurate, and I, you know, I went in, you know, understanding Sullivan said one thing happened and Bonin denied it, and so I thought the truth would be somewhere in the middle. The truth was really right at the end of, of what, where Sullivan described it, um, and so he deserves credit for, for being honest about that. And, and um, look, there is pressure on him to release the full tape. Having now heard it, while there are some embarrassing and insulting comments on there about particular members, I do think it would be in the public interest from a transparency standpoint for it to be released. Keep in mind, the person who is at greatest risk from it being released is the Speaker of the House, and he has called for it to be released. So uh, to me, I think the, 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 the advantage or the benefit, the public benefit of it being released outweighs the cost. When it comes to the Texas Rangers investigating the lawsuit, uh, some people say, yeah, you know, bribery doesn't look good, but what he did didn't break the law. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we'll see. I don't, I don't know what the standard is either. I mean, it is clear that at the very beginning, the speaker talked specifically about uh, granting media credentials to this organization. And then throughout the rest of the, that portion of the meeting, he talks about trying to convince them not to, uh, not to play in any Republican primaries, but if they are, that there's 10 approved members they could go after. And then also trying to convince them not to, to, to support his own primary opponent. So um, whether media credentials meet the threshold of a, quote, thing of value, 
I right. think is going to be what this is going to come down to. Um, Empower Texas was able to cover the House without media credentials last session. Mm -hmm. They just aren't in, you know, on, on the floor, right on the outside the rail there. So uh, that's going to be the big question. Uh, either way, I think I think most Republicans just want to know what the, the result is going to be here. Yeah. Do we have criminal liability with our speaker? If so, that we have to go down one path. It's going to be very unpleasant. If we don't, let's move on. Let's reunify. Let's all get on the same page because the majority uh, control the Texas House is at stake. Yeah. Uh, some Democrats and Republicans both say the speaker can't come back from this regardless of how this plays out they don't think he'll be speaker the next session what are your thoughts I think the odds are pretty good Democrats are going to take the House majority so in that case he wouldn't be speaker but even if Democrats don't take the House majority I think he's in trouble with the membership how do you restore the trust this was a little white lie this wasn't a little oh your bill's going to come up tomorrow and it doesn't come up tomorrow this was a major major <laughs> lie to the full membership of the speaker so the next time there's a scrap in the house over some issue and people turn to the speaker to say are you for a b or c and he says c who would believe him and another word on the legalities involved here, there could be conspiracy charges, there could be bribery charges, there could be campaign finance violations as well. And so people can understand what's at stake and what's the value of that press pass. Empower Texas is a campaign organization. It's not a media organization. It's a campaign organization that opposes many Republicans during the election season. They would have access to the floor, meaning access to the members that they are going to oppose. They don't watch them from the gallery or stand there with a lobby outside the door. They'd be on the floor with the members, some of whom they're going to oppose. That's the issue behind the request and the potential bribe. And yet they're allowed in the Senate. You know, the big, the big uh, issue this time around with the, the legislative session for media was that there were all of a sudden separate credentialing processes. Yeah. It used to just be the House, and if you got credentialed in the House, you were fine, but the Senate did its own this time around. Yeah, I, I think it's a problem. I don't think you should let advocacy groups on the floor of the Senate. I mean, I think the Senate made a terrible mistake when they did that. They're not the media organization. They're not reporters. I used to be a reporter. I used to value my press pass a lot, by the way. Uh, but you can't start letting advocacy groups on. I mean, the group that I consult with now, Progress Texas, would I even think of asking for a press credential so I could be on the floor to bug the members, some of whom I'm going to oppose next time? No, it's just not appropriate. It's not proper. Yeah, interesting stuff. We're running out of time, unfortunately, so we've got to wrap this up. But if you guys missed any of this conversation, it's going to be uploaded on CKB.com right after the newscast. We'll be right back.